John Butler. We are live. Better late than never. Here we are. So exactly. uh, you were busy with clients and things happen and we're not going to uh, let that get in the way with our... Uh... Nope. So uh, here we are. Let's see if we get any people coming in. I got a lot of stuff I want to talk about. So, um, so I shot a couple yesterday, both from the Ottawa Valley, and I mentioned you, and I mentioned your last name, and they, ah, Butler, yeah, I know the Butler, Butler, and then they said the but, <laughs> they said the Butler car dealership. I said wrong, Butler. Yeah, just down the road from me here. Yeah. I said this Butler that I know from Pembroke area is from Toronto. He's a big city Butler. Mm-hmm. So for those who are wondering what I'm talking about, there's a Butler uh, car dealership. I don't know if it's Dodge or Ford or whatever, right beside That's John. That's a Chevy City. GM. There you go. It's a GM. So when I drove into Pembroke last year, first time, I'm like, holy geez, John's doing well. He's got a car dealership. <laughs> Photography's doing very, very well. <laughs> I only wish. Not that it's not doing well. Of course it's doing well, but I wish I had a car dealership. <laughs> well, then you might get out of photography. Who knows? No, I could just do more stuff on my own and not have to worry about money-wise, just do it for fun. Yeah, buy any gear you want with no hesitation. <laughs> what is the, awesome. uh, was the joke my friend used to say? How do you, um, how does a photographer end up with a million dollars? Quit, <laughs> change the profession. <laughs> Start, starts with two. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Uh, if you're doing it that way, you're doing it wrong. You want to be able to start with very little and then build up, build up and save your money and uh, create yourself a uh, long-term profitable situation where you're uh, happy doing what you're doing. You know, I've been 43 years in this game and I get clients. It's been really busy. I get clients, I had a really good conversation. Actually, the couple from Pembroke that came in yesterday, mm -hmm. I shot their kids grade 12 uh, high school senior about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Did their family portrait 12 years ago. We had a great conversation and uh, talking about, and this conversation I have all the time with so many people, and they're just like, wow, you're still in the game. I said, yeah, I'm yeah. still in the game. I really love what I do. And uh, it's so cool to be, get paid, earn a decent living doing what you love. It's, it's exactly. like it's not a real job. I'm sure you feel the same way, Johnny. Oh, I do. And I always tell people, like, they all want, I've seen so many people from in my area come out being photographers. They got a Facebook page, that's it. They got a nice camera, and they think it's going to just take off like that if they just do yeah. stuff here and there for family. But they don't realize it takes a good five, six years to get a business, any business, not just photography, any business yep. going. You got to last for a while. You got to suck it up and take the good with the bad. And, you got to put uh, the work into it too. I mean, you just definitely. don't buy gear and get a business card. No. And most of them, it's always, I used to cringe because there was a wedding photographer that was here and uh, she used to shoot and um, she was fairly well known in this area, but she would always go to her weddings and she had her one Canon Rebel and her mm -hmm. one lens, I think it was, maybe mm -hmm. two lenses, and uh, didn't use flash at all. She never used flash. And, she was a um, natural light photographer. Yeah, but even like in the receptions and everything, like it was always flash. And at that time, this is like a good, I want to say five, six, seven, eight years ago, the cameras, the uh, the ISO levels weren't the greatest if oh, you were using muted. like a Rebel or something like that. Um, it wasn't like a full frame camera, like the 5Ds or something, or the, the Nikon 800s where... You could go. I can't hear you, ice. John. Oh no! How about now? Hello, hello, hello. That's weird. Nothing. I don't know what happened. Can you I hear me? Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> One second. Were you touching any buttons on your computer? Nope. Why well, this is weird? Uh. How about now? Can you hear me now? No? One second. It says muted. I look at the tab, it says muted. What happened? Can you hear me now? No? Unmute. Nothing? Wow, <laughs> this is weird. You can still hear me, right? Yep.
I'm looking at the tab, and um, under the tab, it says muted. Something happened. I don't know. I got nothing. Hmm. Well, John, I don't know. I'm pretty sure people can hear me, so maybe we're just going to have to continue on. <laughs> You're just going to have to use sign language. You go. Uh, and uh, hopefully my vo uh, my voice and audio is recording, so the replay will count. Uh, John, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I made the same mistake I've made before, but I thought I'd fix. Well, I did fix it because I, I used Chrome, and that fixes the problem. And I forgot about that, so I'm actually in Firefox, and I wanted to show my screen. Um, Yeah, it's not going to work. John, are you back? No, I got to wait for John. Oh, John's going to fix it. All right. Um, test one, two, test. Still can't hear you, Johnny. Test one, two, three, test, boom, test. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, say something. I can hear you now, yeah. I think it might have been your mic. What do you think? I'm thinking still something with the mic for some reason wasn't working, so I just put on these headphones that have a microphone built into them. All right. Well, we apologize, people. Now All right, John. You, I'm hearing a buzz in the background now. Oh, that's my oh, brain. Fan? Okay. Must be your fan. I have a fan on. I'm, I'm really freaking warm back that's here. Fine. I apologize for that, everybody. For that's okay. Technical difficulty. It was working fine there. You and I were talking fine, and then boom, it just collapsed. No. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I didn't touch anything. I don't know. I'll fix it later. I'll have this in here just for show now. <laughs> so now that we're back, and, uh, still broadcasting. Okay. I wonder how many people are watching us, wondering what the hell's going on. Out here. There, I think. Uh, yeah, we're still live. <laughs> Good. All right. I'm going to get things going. Can you see my screen? I can see. Yes, I can. What do you see? Uh, it looks like uh, a viewing session going on. All right. I want to get into pop up weddings because we shot five weddings last weekend. And um, down the road, I'd like to do another more organized talk about pop-up weddings, but I want to get Tina involved. And the um, pop-up weddings are exciting for us. Um, I look at pop-up weddings like, to me, is the wedding industry evolved. And it's really exciting. My wife became a wedding officiant three years ago, and it's been really, really exciting. So if you're in the wedding industry and you're doing a large wedding, you're probably going to be hurting because of what's going on with the COVID lockdowns and all that nonsense. So, um, so we, I don't know, we got lucky. I guess we timed it. Pop-up weddings were a thing, and we started organizing these events. 
Last weekend was our first big pop-up uh, wedding event. Now we do do one-off pop-up weddings and we've done a few of those already, but this was our first pop-up wedding event. Uh, so I'm gonna get into that and I'm gonna get in some technical stuff and I'm going to uh, talk about, I just wanna make sure, John, I, John, I can't tell if you're making any comments or if you need to talk. No, so, I'm just listening to you. So you just butt in if you want to say something. Okay. Can you see the screen right now? I can. Jennifer Lalonde. Okay, thanks. And it looks fine? Yep. Okay. Um, this, we did a pop, a fairy day event three weeks ago in your area, John. And this is from last weekend where we did a pop-up, uh, sorry, fairy day event. I keep confusing everything because we, our primary... Uh, products are uh, fairy day pictures and pop-up weddings plus executive portraits and family portraits so John always teases me about my comparison and metaphor when I say uh, you got to be like a Swiss Army knife it's okay to specialize in different areas and the reason I believe in that and it came from Dan Kennedy he always warns business owners of when you rely on one thing, either that's one person or one marketing strategy or one source of leads, you know, you got to have 101 ways to make uh, business flow into your studio. And I really believe in that idea and I really keep pushing it. So uh, I think John ought to be doing weddings myself, possibly pop up weddings because of the area that you're in. It's perfect. You got some beautiful areas that you could uh, do those in, but whatever. Uh, the idea is, I think, sound. So, anyways, I just wanted to show this. This is our uh, sales area where we show uh, we do all our... Uh, these are a couple of kids that came in for their fairy day event. And that's my wife. My wife, she just sits at the screen. It's a 44-inch screen, and she makes the sales, and she's quite good at it. And our sales have been very, very strong for all our fairy day pictures. So, I just wanted to mention that. So, things are working out really well. There's our setup from our fairy day event two weeks ago. Uh, I wanted to talk about lighting. I, I beat people over the head all the time about lighting on fairy pictures because I see this mistake. You could see my lights coming over from the right. Yep. John, I set it up that way at your studio. Yep. Remember how strong that angle was? Yeah, it was very so almost 90 degrees. Basically. Almost 90 degrees. So the kid's going to go in this area here. Main light's right there. F8. These kicker lights in the background are at a F5.6 and 2 thirds. This is a weak fill, and its job with the pocket wizard. Yeah, its job is just to fire. I didn't use a fill at your studio because you have that wall. It's a long, narrow, and the fill occurred naturally. It's really, really important. And when I'm shooting, I never do this. However, I use this as an example of what not to do. You could see where they're turned away from the main light. This is a problem. He's in shadow. She's almost in split lighting. But because she was so young and I was just kind of like, sometimes you just got to, you know, instead of perfection, go for expression. So, uh, so in this one here, he was a little too far forward. So he actually blocked her and she was almost in full shade. I had to lighten her in Photoshop. So, and same one here. She's looking the other way. I'm like, ah, that's a cute shot. I'm going to do it anyways. You notice how that split lighting. So that's, I just wanted to show you what not to do. And this is what, lighting, yeah, this is what to do. I always lean their faces. I favor it towards the main light. See these two girls here? You see that lighting? Yeah. Right? This is almost Rembrandt lighting. That's this one. Call broad lighting there. Yeah. And th well, this is almost like modified loop lighting. Yeah. Same here. And uh, of course I have a flash inside the box on this. This pose here is a new pose and it's really, people are liking it. They're actually ordering yeah. it. So. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. You can see some of the samples from our fairy day, so. I have a question too with your mushroom. You ever think about putting some of the greenery on the bottom of the mushroom? That's a good idea. T turn so turn your volume up, John, can you? Okay, yep. I'm gonna turn my fan off, hold on. How's that? Uh, Is that a lot better? Oh more? yeah, my fan was creating a lot of noise. I can go up more if you want. A little bit, go for it. How about that? Give me a hint more. 
Come right. on, man. We're about up to about one. We're almost at full power there, baby. Yeah, it's good. Could be this is this microphone. But no, I was wondering, on the uh, fair porches where the mushroom hits the mirror there, just to cover it up there, see down there, it almost yeah. looks like uh, it just stops instead of going into the water. So if you put like some greenery around where the mushroom meets the thing there. Yeah, that's a good idea. It makes it look like it goes into the water. I don't know why we've not thought of that before. Maybe we're just too easily distracted, but... So John's talking about this area right here, that yeah. seam. All right, Johnny? Yeah, take some of that greenery that's at the rocks there and just put it yeah. right around that seam there. Or... It'll, it'll merge into the water a bit better. Go to Walmart, go to Michael's, go to the dollar store. They've always got good prices on... The, that's where we bought all of our greenery at places like that. Yeah, good idea. I'm gonna thought. bring that. I'm gonna bring that up with Tina. So, um, I just want to talk about something. This is kind of a, this is a side thing. Okay, so you could see Jen Lalone, right? Yep. Okay, this is this is a, a Hurley inspired shoot. I did the triangular lighting. Mm -hmm. This lady I photographed her a couple of weeks ago. She came in for a headshot, and she was really, really nervous. Really nervous had a hard time with her. I actually think I traumatized her. <laughs> <laughs> um, to like, I find adults, they're just such a pain in the ass. They're so nervous. And, um, uh, she didn't 99% of our executive headshots. They order within a day. As soon as mm -hmm. they get the gallery. we only use galleries for headshots, by the way, or commercial. We never use it for anything else. Never, never, never. That's a deal killer. Uh, but it works for headshots, and uh, she wasn't ordering, and finally she got through. And I had, remember when she came in, I said, look, if you're not happy, we guarantee our work. We will offer you a free reshoot. So, And she emailed and said, yeah, she'd like to do a reshoot. So, Now, John, can you see that? Yep. There's okay. about four pictures there. She emailed, and she sent these, and she said, well, you know, these are, you know, some of the And so I'm looking at these, I'm like, okay, well, she's substantially younger here. Mm -hmm. So what's your take on that, John? Somebody emails you back and goes, well, these are shots of me, and this is kind of, I don't know what she's saying, if like she's saying this is what kind of I was hoping for. but yeah, I, I've, I've never had that where they've sent old pictures of themselves, but I've had them send me samples from like Pinterest or something like that. Okay. It's kind of look, like the team that I shot today, Right. we kind of ahead of time had a little chat box and we were uh, through Facebook and we were sort of sharing ideas going Good. on to Google and yeah. saying, well, here's kind of the idea I have. And they're like, yeah, maybe this and kind of like this. And so we had kind of a plan going in. You do that with everyone? Not everybody, but sometimes I try to when I can. Yeah. I try to I, do a consultation with them all, even if it's on the phone or just on yeah. the phone. That's, that's really smart. Yeah. That's really, really smart. Um, Communication, man, is so important. It's that I value expectation. That. Yeah. And then when they come yeah. into your studio, you both have a plan on what you're going to do. So this is kind of where I'm leading with this conversation. It's um, this lady here. I don't know if she's her expectations are unrealistic. Uh, I know she's very self-conscious. So whatever. It doesn't matter. When she sent the email with these attachments, I was going to reply via the email directly to her, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to make a video instead. So I made a video using my webcam. Yeah. And uh, she loved it. And uh, the first thing I said is, uh, look, I do these videos all the time and um, because I, wanna, I don't want my message to be lost in translation, which it can mm -hmm. be sometimes on an email. Sometimes Definitely. people will take things. The nuance is lost. So I ex she mentioned something in her email. She said, wow, maybe we could do something with natural light. <laughs> so the f I said to her right away, I said, uh, okay, thanks for your, you know, we're going to do a reshoot for you, no problem. So I want to create a direction and I want to find out a little more about where you want to go with all this. And I went through these images and I said to her, I said, well, this image here looks like it was shot a few years ago and it's got a beautiful smile. You look very confident. Mm -hmm. If you can du duplicate that confidence and that smile, this would be really good. We're going to go for this. That's what I said in the, yep. the in the message. I said this picture here, obviously very dark. Obviously, you're relaxed. You're with friends, as you know, as yeah, is indicative, exactly. and it's a very casual shot. So again, you're relaxed. This is very important. The lighting is really bad because you got the raccoon eyes, sure, and it's not good. So I mentioned that, and same with this one here. I said the same thing. It's very grainy. You got a very confident look here, looking good. 
I'm not saying anything. This might be an older picture. I don't know. Yeah. So she might have realistic, unrealistic expectations. So I did that video and I sent it to her and she was very, very impressed with the fact that I did that. And I hope she comes around. I think she's... So that was the original shot and she hasn't come back for the second one yet. Yeah, she's going to schedule it. Okay. Like I literally just sent that two days ago. She replied Mm -hmm. like yesterday. Um, She, again, was really nervous when she came in. Yep. So look at this shot. Okay. The shots I just showed you. Do you think these are substantially older? And I'm thinking I, she's got a little more gray and she just doesn't like the fact that she's getting older. I think the one with her friends is around the same time zone maybe, but the other two look like they were before, way before. Yeah. Like especially the one with the yellow background. Looks like it was way before. So the point being, I'm communicating with her and uh, you know, I think that's so important to have good communication. Definitely. You have to because uh, it's that expectation and yeah. So here's the uh, gallery. You know, I got a whole bunch of shots of her. I shot them exactly the way Hurley shoots. You know, with the triangular yep. lighting and shooting a little low. Yeah. And I really, really had a hard time. That's what with I her. was doing today. Yeah, you're doing the same thing, right? Yeah. It's now, still an error. With her, I find she's leaning. Either you're tilting the camera, or she's leaning back too much to the one side, to the right. Yeah, side. this one here. Her left side, yeah. This one here. That one there. See, she's tilting too much. Yeah. I, think. I don't know what I was thinking. Let's call that it cr- yeah. a creative tilt. I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> here she is. And really, yeah, I got some good smiles, but yeah, I don't know. She looks totally different than those other pictures, like you said. So it's hard yeah. for you to compare with the other pictures when she sends stuff yeah. like that. It's like, you know what? Like I think, I think she's older in these. I even think in this one here, this was like six, seven years ago. That's what mm. I think. That's my guess. So I'm going to let her reconcile all that. And I think the important thing is I don't want to talk about clients like this and get too deep into it because I don't, I just, as a professional photographer, we need to take care of our clients. And yeah. this is part and parcel of where I'm going, coming at and trying to sort of like carry her through the process of whatever, whatever it is we need to do to get to the point where she's happy, I'm happy, everyone's happy. So Definitely. And you will. We'll get there. I hope. I uh, hope. All right, so um, Tina and I started doing pop-up weddings three years ago. We rented out a nice, nice, nice location, park setting in our in our city. We did our first pop-up wedding day. We did five weddings in one day. <laughs> and then we rented out an alternate location on the lake in October. We did the, had the same success, and we did a whole crap load of one-offs. So somebody would call us and go, they want a pop-up wedding in their backyard. We can go there and do just... Just efficient or efficient in photography or efficient photography will bring cater in some food, we'll bring in a tent, and we can do all kinds of add-ons. And so we become wedding planners of sorts. Uh, the idea is, though, it's got to be a small, up to 50 people. Uh, so, But the wedding events that we create, maximum 25 people. So we none of the halls are open in our city. I don't know if they are opening in your area at all. Um, I think they're allowed to now to a certain amount, but like I said, it's still pretty low in numbers of how many people can be in there at a time. Yeah, they're not even there yet here. They're locked yeah. down tight. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure, but I'm not sure. If we, I can't definitely. Like, we can go to restaurants now. Oh, yeah, that's that's allowed. But I'm talking about city-owned, sure. city township-owned facilities. Yeah, that I'm not sure. They're all locked down tight in there, and we got a lot of them available. But... Uh, so w- this historic chapel, we call it, it's a historic chapel, we don't call it a church, um, is on the outskirts of our city. And the people who run it, mm-hmm. they're an older retired couple, they contacted us uh, a year ago in May because they saw our ad. We ran an ad because we do uh, a trade in a 50-plus lifestyle magazine. Mm-hmm. And we started running ads promoting pop-up weddings. And they saw that. And they emailed us and said, would you guys be interested in renting out our little chapel? I had no idea this existed. I'm Hmm. very familiar with the town. It was just kind of around the corner, sort of at a dead-end street in the little neighborhood of this town. It's a really, really quaint little church. So we booked it out uh, for last weekend. And um, Tina's like, we're not even going to give them the option of going to a town or a city uh, hall because we don't know where they're at. And we're done chasing them down. So we just said, this is where we're going. We booked five weddings. We did four on Saturday, one on Sunday. 
uh, our goal originally was to do six per day, and that and the first time we did this, we only we booked out five, which was crazy. Good thing we didn't end up with six because five just about did us in. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we decided we can do up to four now. A four per day is the maximum. And uh, in, instead of every two hours, now we're going every three hours. So we've got a little more breathing room. Sure. So what happened was when we booked out this and we started promoting it, we booked it out right away. So we had another call and they called us and they said, can we come in? And then we're like, we're booked. However, uh, they don't run mass during the summertime. So we called them up and we said, can we book it out for Saturday and Sunday? Which is what we did. So on Sunday, we booked we booked a fifth wedding. So it was a crazy weekend last weekend. Now, is that church like a certain denomination? Because I know there's some people that if it's a, a church of a different religion they won't yeah. go into it type of thing. it's a non-secular ceremony okay yeah we, the ceremony yes but yeah so but if it's like a catholic church you might find people from another religion even though you're not doing yeah. a re- catholic wedding they might not it, go into it's the united church. it's a united church okay however i don't think that that would have been an issue because i know with uh like my wife grew up as a jehovah's witness when All she right. was younger when she was a kid right and uh they a lot of times will not go into another church Unless it's a Jehovah's Witness church. Yeah. Kingdom Hall, they call it, or whatever. So that was all I was worried about. Like, if you have somebody hire you and they say, oh, well, if you're going to do it in there, I can't get married there. But I don't think you'll run into that problem. No, it's really been not an issue. That's some, good. some, one bride made a joke about churches burning down in Canada. I forget what it was. <laughs> and I remember one of the groomsmen made another joke. You know, he's walking in with his wife and, uh, so she walked in. He went, "Oh, you didn't, you didn't burst into a ball of flames." <laughs> <laughs> now, do you so, have it outside? Does it look really nice? If people want to do an outdoor wedding, they can do it outside. Here, there? no, you're no. indoors. So, and we can have up to thirty people, but we tell them and uh, we promote it as a twenty-five person. Uh, yeah. A lot of people bring in a few extras. So, cool. so, anyways, that's the location. So, like, there's the team. That's my daughter on the right, my wife on the left. And uh, we were just, that was um, Saturday when we got there. Uh, we have another wedding this Saturday at the same church. Mm-hmm. And the church has nothing going on all week. So we asked them if we can just keep our stuff set up. You can see we have uh, all these flowers are ours. Oh, okay. And uh, those lights belongs to the church. So we use those lights. And uh, back in the corner, right to the right, is where this is there's a bench back there and i have my speaker uh we have a wireless mic and we play we play uh, music for all our weddings so i customize a playlist Mm -hmm. for the processional recessional and signing music and all that everybody gets that so uh my daughter was yeah it's just on on uh, spotify uh i send my wife and i send my daughter each playlist so they have it on their phones as backup okay i like backup it's like having two cameras john would you ever just shoot with one camera no you gotta have a backup so i'm always paranoid so yeah my daughter's a graphic design artist so we asked her in the in the basement there's a hall where everybody goes after the ceremony for snacks and coffee and drinks and uh i asked her if she would do this and she did a a nice um congratulations so every time a wedding was gone we'd erase the middle part and put in their names so I want to talk about my flash unit. Um, this is, I was explaining this to my daughter and I said, let's go outside. Cause I have a, that, that new one you were showing me when you were here. Yeah. That little 350 or whatever it is. I got a picture. I got a picture of it. And I should have put it in the start. Hold on. Let me show it to you. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. 350. Yeah. Hold on. Why didn't it show up? It should have been it right did. there. I saw it there a second ago. Yeah. It was there. Yeah, right there. But it should have showed up right after. Big? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. See right have. here? Yep. I don't know why it didn't do that, but <laughs> it jumped ahead. It jumped ahead. For some reason, boom, just boom. not showing it. In yeah, the I don't know. It's, uh, okay. Anyways, it's the, uh, you can see it now, right? Yeah. The Godox V350. Yeah, and I bought it from uh, Strobe Pro, so they have their branding on the version that I have. Okay. And it's the same flash. Yeah. It's an amazing flash. 
it works as master, it works as slave, and it works as straight TTL, straight manual. Yeah. Uh, so I can use it with the Godox wireless radio thing, and I, if I need it as a slave or master, it'll it has all that in the menu. So it's mm-hmm. uh, it's a menu I'm very familiar with because of the um, Godox system that I've been using for a few years now. So it's really kind of cool. Okay, so. Um, I also use the BM600, which is here with a 36, 36-inch uh, Octodome. So I'm explaining to my daughter how nice, uh, how much of a, I love this flash because it works in high-speed sync. There's mm-hmm. a high-speed sync setting. Yep. And I said, what I'm trying to do is when I'm photographing people in front of the church, like when the guys show up, I want to be able to really darken the ambient. I had to explain that to her. She had a hard time understanding it. So I want the shutter speed to be really fast. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm shooting at about somewhere around f4, and I want the surrounding area to go dark. So here's a first shot I'd done. Here's a little bit darker. You can see the sky's coming and starting to come through. Here it's getting even darker, and this is what I'm trying to achieve, Mm -hmm. is that sort of look here. Okay, and there's a worked up image. See, I want that dramatic. I want to be able to do this kind of stuff without having to haul out my BM600. And I want to be able to do it fast for individuals or pictures of two people. Well, you and James used to do that with your off-camera flash two light yeah. setup before the two yeah. ki- like two kicker two from the side there before. That but what a pain in the butt! You know, you got to set up the lights. I want to yeah. be able to do some of these shots really fast. And exactly. the Sony, the uh, the Godox is way more versatile than the old system. Mm-hmm. The old system was 100% manual. Yeah, you couldn't shoot high speed. So look at the settings here, John. I'm uh, shooting on my Sony with the G Master 16 to 35. So yeah. I'm at 16, right? I'm shooting at 3.5 at yeah. ISO 100 at 640th of a second. Which you wouldn't be able to do normally because of <coughs> that high-speed sync. Yeah. Because what's, so, uh, what's your sync speed there? About 200, <coughs> 250 on that camera? Sync speed? Yeah. On that camera? It goes up to like 3,000 yeah. or something like that. No, I mean like if you were just doing normal non-high-speed sync, it would probably... You can only 200. With your flash, but 200. 200. Yeah. It's not as fast as... The, I think the Nikon was 250. Mine's 160, the one I use. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so you put it on high-speed sync, and then boom. Whatever, yeah. I can shoot at a thousand of a second. Now, with these Godoxes, whatever flash I'm using doesn't matter, the power output decreases as I increase the shutter speed. Mm-hmm. So I got to realize that. And you yeah. can see I'm in manual, so all I yeah. do is go full power, half power. I just, I just push that light way out there. So I want to be able to create fast stuff like this groom. That's really cool. I just, like, it's it's kind of a crappy pose because he's got a double chin. But that's the look <laughs> I wanted. Yeah, and that early. this was uh, end of the day. The sun was starting to peek through in the background. You could see it was a little bit blown out. However, well, I like that, though. It looks good. That's what I was after. So here we have a, an actual shot that I use this on, and that's what I tried to do with everybody. Mm-hmm. And same lens, 640th of a second, 3.5 ISO 100. So that's some tech stuff. And uh, I'm, uh, as you are, a big fan of Godox. Yep. I've been changing a lot of mine over. And when I get a couple more of my 640s I, or 600s, I'll probably end up selling my other ones. Yeah. Because I won't need them. That's where I'm going. I'm. I really. I really. Really like the Godoxes. Yeah, I'm really liking them too. I got and, the Pro, the 600 Pro, not the BM, and I really like it. I'm going to pick on Nancy Tilberg. Um, I don't know. I don't think she's with us right now. She said she was going to try and make it today because she's doing pop-up weddings too. Mm. Um, but she thinks the Godox is like really, really cheap, and if you drop it, it's going to just break into a million pieces. It's actually not cheap, no, John. I, I don't know if you know. Drop. <laughs> Well, you don't want to drop any of this stuff, no. but it, it's not cheap. I mean, when no. you pick up the Godox equipment, yeah. don't you feel like it's like oh, really yeah. well, it's well made? Especially the, the 600 Pro, because the from what I understand, I don't have the BM. You have that, so you would know better than I would. But the Pro, yeah. um, the thing they changed from the BM is the part that goes into your stand. Yep. That you lock it in. Apparently, it's all metal. I don't know if the BM is. I think it was plastic before. So they've maybe. improved it. Mine's and probably also, plastic. And also, if you notice, i got a handle in the back of mine now. Where it's easier to tilt and stuff. I noticed that. Big handle. So I have Very Godox. Well I have Godox Flash Envy. So I'm going to be yeah. getting uh, more and yeah. adding to my system. 
Once so I get a couple more, I'll be probably getting rid of my Einsteins. I love my Einsteins, don't get me wrong. But they have to be plugged in. And the problem is they're the only company, Palsy Buff, in order to use their stuff, you have to have their speed light or speed ring for their soft boxes, and it doesn't fit any other kind of lighting system. Yeah. Whereas the Godox is the Bowens mount, which fits almost everything. So some people, yeah. it's easy to get the stuff. So here, this was uh, me explaining to my daughter again uh, about this little flash unit, but I was explaining to her bounce flash. Mm -hmm. So I asked Tina to stand there. We were waiting for the, you know, we were all settled in. Uh, by the way, we set up on Friday, so we were good to go for Saturday. And uh, I'm asking uh, Tina to pose for me so I can show and explain to Danielle uh, Bounce Flash. So you know the top of it. Everybody knows this. You got the top. Can you see that, John? Yep. This is a Nikon Flash, but you know, they all pivot, right? Yep. So exactly. that little flash I got from Godox, it does that. So here's pointing to the left up into the ceiling. You can see the lighting. Yeah. So this is Bounce. This is straight on, and you could see there's a uh, shadow here from yeah. the... I keep forgetting to take the lens shade off, but I should have. <laughs> so this is straight on. This is bounce, much softer. This is bounce from the right. So I just pivoted it this way, mm -hmm. and I did all that to show my daughter the different lighting. And uh, this is bounced on top. Okay. This is left, straight, right on top okay um so this is the side of the church this was our first wedding last saturday it was supposed to rain all day it never did thank god <laughs> but this they had a full-on bridal party second marriage for both of them uh all these these two girls belong to uh i think the bride and a couple other kids belong to the groom so it's a blended family and they were all in the bridal party so she had a really really when she has a big dress like that i do some really cool stuff with it uh, that was the only bride of the whole weekend pop-up weddings. They often will have a really nice dress, but usually not a long one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to do this kind of stuff. So, you know, this is straight off camera. She was really having a hard time because of the sky. Some people do that. They're like vampires. Mm -hmm. So I asked, I asked everybody if they could please hold that for me. And then I think I got one of her. Yeah, so I got one of her. Again, this is straight off camera. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so they're holding that reflector above you then. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm coming in when I'm shooting these. Yeah. I'm coming in. Be. I'm standing right around here. Okay. And I'm leaning over. Yeah. I'm, my camera's around right here. Hopefully so when you have she's, your camera strap on so it doesn't fall and hit them. Oh, the yeah. <laughs> I, I use a really good camera strap. So, do you use yeah. these here? I have the rapid straps. Yeah, that's what I got. This one here, right? Yes, that's what I have, yeah. I love that one. I got two of those. They're really old. But they you work, and they work awesome. See the duct tape? I got duct tape so that little <laughs> latch doesn't open up. I don't want it to open up while I'm shooting. Yeah. So um, yeah, this uh, particular wedding was a lot of fun. I got a lot of really good pictures, and um, I brought them out on the road. Actually, I'll show you a few in a minute. Okay. Uh, but before I do there, I'm going to show you, uh, I want to go to my file where all my pop-up weddings are. I did a family a couple days ago when they had a four month old or a three month old baby girl. Uh, maybe it was, no, it was two months old, which is awkward. Uh, but, uh, they wanted to go outdoors. I'm like, all right, let's go outdoors. And here we go. So I went to the local park where there's a million people around and the sun is setting behind here. So I thought this is the spot I'm going to shoot them right here. And uh, there's the right, so this is straight on, this is the right, and this is the final shot. That's beautiful, I love that. I love 85, that 85 mil, mm -hmm. so right here, same rock, you see that rock, right? Yep. And uh, Godox BM600 softbox, my wife's over to the right, she's illuminating them. So uh, I want to show this too, because I had this couple come in this week, three days ago. Um, Tina had the session... And she said that there's a boyfriend, girlfriend coming in. I'm like, well, how are they dressed and blah, blah. I didn't even know. I like to know a bit more. And they come walking in and they're like, whoa, you guys look amazing. <laughs> She's a real looker. So once they walked in, my, my thing is, is when they come in and I don't know what they're dressed, I'm, I wasn't worried about it too much. 
if it would have been a big family, I might have contacted them and say, you know, give me a little more information. What is it where you guys are? So I want to be set up when a big family comes in. But if it's only a boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, my thought was, and this is what I did. I said, we're just going to sit down and shoot the breeze and talk. So they came in and they sat down and we talked. And, you know, I wanted to, I was looking at them. I said, what do you, she's got a beautiful black gown and he has a suit, tie. I'm like, oh man, you don't see that often with young couples showing up. So as I'm talking to it, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go to black background. And I showed them an example. I said, we're going to go to black background. And they were like, yeah. <laughs> they had a blast. They cool. had an absolute blast. Now, here's the thing, Johnny. One light. That's all I have here. Okay. My si six-foot octagon. There's no kicker, no background light, nothing. No. Nope. And it's Reflector just Reflector to the right or no? Nothing. That's awesome. The only fill is probably just coming off the ceiling and the far wall over to the right. So It just shows people. You, and people always want to throw all these lights. It's like, you know what? Learn to use one light. You can do amazing work with just one light. Yeah. And then add lights when you need to. Here's my, here's my my big lesson. This is going to sound really, really weird, maybe. Maybe not. My flash meter, my $700 flash meter, mm -hmm. wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. So a couple of days ago, I went and got a spare battery for it. Wouldn't work. And I kind of, in my head, blamed my daughter because she used it a few days ago. And she did a <laughs> shoot in the studio. And I'm like, ah, did she drop it? And I said, ah, screw it. I'm just going to wing it. And that's all I did. I 100% shot the whole shoot without any metering. Mm. And uh, <laughs> I think all these pictures are overexposed. And that's part of what created a really beautiful set of tones. And for some reason, it helped in the end. Yeah. Uh, instead of leaning into the technical, which is something anybody, if they're especially learning and trying to master exposure... Uh, I highly recommend you meter your light. But, you know, I think I'm at the point now where it's safe for me to just wing it and say, okay, mm -hmm. shoot, let's analyze, turn it down, bring it up. And I was really, really happy with the results. Once you get more comfortable with your lights too and your studio or wherever you're shooting all the time, yeah, you, uh, you can wing it because you kind of know where to set it. And I always find with digital compared to film, always err on overexposed slightly. As well, long as you're not blowing out the whites, overexposed, because yeah. I find if you underexpose, in film they used to say underexposed, because you can always bring it up, whereas I, I find with digital, if you underexpose and bring it up, you're adding a lot of noise into those shadow areas. So always go a little yeah. bit over if you have to. Well, I'm pretty sure these were all overexposed, but I just went from the pure gut shoot, verify. And I love went. that shot there. I love that chair. Yeah. That all, that, that's a perfect shot. I love that shot. Yeah. They love this too. So when I'm shooting this... This couple, they were just like, they were, I could tell, they had no idea what to expect. Cause That's badass and sexy at the same time. Yeah, and they were, and, and I was kind of like conveying that to them. I didn't mm -hmm. say those words, but I just said, you guys look really good. And I was yeah. very positive as I was shooting and I was getting right into it. And I could tell they were really enjoying it. They were really having a good time. So that was, that was kind of cool in so far as a learning experience for me and, uh, shooting off the cuff pure gut mm -hmm. feel when it comes to when it comes you to you pick the perfect chair for it too because with that dark backdrop having a darker tone uh -huh. chair like that and it matched uh -huh. what they're wearing that was perfect that's why with me i had those uh apple boxes you saw when you were here um but they're very light and i've actually stained three of them Th now those chairs were given to me uh, a few weeks ago where my daughter works she works for a cosmetic surgery clinic mm -hmm. And they were getting rid of them, and they asked if I wanted them. And I said, like, well, I'm taking them. I Definitely. love those chairs. <laughs> so I got them for free. It had a very John Gress look, if you know who John Gress is. No, I don't. I, I might have showed you him when you were here, <laughs> but I can't remember. Here's the first wedding last Saturday morning. I'll just go through it really, really, really quick. And, uh, you know, I shoot it like a regular wedding. It's a pop-up wedding, but, you know, I want to get shots of the guys in front of the church, candid shots of people coming in. Uh, this is the... Uh, bride's son he's this is underexposed but i can pull those tones out you're looking at straight off the camera here so mm -hmm. he's holding the rings i'm getting candid shots so you can see it's a small little church you know and uh i'm using that same flash i'm bouncing on top and uh we're getting some pretty good stuff just like a normal wedding and then she's gonna now walk down the aisle with her dad 
If you're doing like four weddings a day, does the battery on that flash, because it's a lithium battery, does it last yeah. all day? Uh, it almost did. So I have a charger here at the church. Okay. Um, I don't know that it was fully charged when I started, so I have to still experiment, but I feel very confident that it would have lasted had it been fully charged. You can always buy a second one just in case. Yeah, if I use it a lot, I will, but it's a lithium battery, yeah, and it's... Uh, They're not cheap. They go on and on. So as soon as we're done the church, I always, you know, get them to do hands up. And let's uh, do a kiss outside, bada boom. And then we do, I always do a group shot, which is easy. You're talking pop-up weddings, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I always do that. And then uh, I start in the pictures right outside the side of the church. That's uh, her mom. She's got the whole Kardashian look. <laughs> kind of pushing it a little too far. The housewives are. of uh, <laughs> Sudbury. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, those are the formals right after the church and the side of the church. And then uh, we went to, to the road. Uh, so I got, you know, the bridal party, the kids. So it's a the, fun shot. Yeah, so I try and get a lot of these when I'm shooting. Always get fun laughing shots. And then I took them out on the road and I did serious Yep. Serious, 2 <laughs> serious. Two point eight. Uh, this is with the eighty-five mil. Normally, I'd want to use the one thirty-five, but I'm just too lazy to switch lenses. When I used to do those shots, I always did the my seventy-two hundred right at it, two hundred yep. and two point eight, and just went at it. Two uh, seventy-two hundred G Master is now in the market now, and it's on my it's on my wish list. But it's a four thousand dollar lens, so I have to. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm think I'm gonna sell the 85 and my 135, and I'm gonna buy a yeah. 70 my 7200. Is my workhorse. I love the 7200. It it's been years since I had one. So I did a bunch of shots like this, and I told her later on. I said, you know, you gotta put one of those. You gotta put one of those on your wall. Get yourself a nice large canvas. I planted seeds in her brain. Cause, mm -hmm. I said, because this is a shot. You, you're these girls are. That boy's like 10, 11, the girls are 14, 15, and the other girl on the left is like 18, and the dude on the right there, he's about 20, 19, 20. I said, these are memories that you're creating for your family. It's a blended mm -hmm. family. You want to show that unity and that memory of your wedding day. So think about getting something large like this because it's really going to have an impact on your decor and on your uh, the lives of your uh, kids. Okay, just let me go ahead here. So I did each family, and then I did a bunch of them walking, you know. And I just wanted to get to, I want to show you guys the dress. Oh, I, okay. I thought I had a picture. I had her squat down, and I had her bridesmaids lift the dress up. Mm -hmm. it makes a beautiful backdrop. Definitely does. Did you, did you ever do that back in yep. the day when you were big time I used to wedding do that photographer? I had the bridesmaids hold it up like that and then shoot down at them. Yeah, makes a perfect back. And then I had her just. I said, just sit on your butt and we're gonna fan out the dress behind you. And that was the other shot that I showed you a while ago where yeah. I got. Oh well, you know this one here. Well, I used to do that that shot you're just talking about in the, in the house in the living room by mm -hmm. the window, big bay window, and have them do that as the background because sometimes the living rooms weren't very nice. Yeah. So you do that and get a nice, gorgeous portrait behind them. Well, sometimes they're laying down on the grass and it's like yeah. an issue. But I find everybody's pretty cool with getting their dresses dirty and what have oh, yeah. you. So After the ceremony, yes. Yeah, it's all cool. Beforehand, it's kind of a little hard when you've got them with just the girls. So this wedding here, we got 456 final images. Most pop-up weddings, they don't end up with that many. No. Uh, let's see what Angela and Paul, they have uh, 244. So, Jamie and Andrew had a lot. They had a bigger bridal party. Sarah and James, they had uh, about 204. So, it varies. It varies. And you can see, I took a picture of that blackboard. So, that's uh, our pop-up wedding experience. And uh, it's, uh, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Five weddings in one weekend. But it's a big, big payday. And you want people to be happy so yes. that they'll spread the word and they got a positive. I think, I think this just might be the future of the wedding photography industry. Yeah. Is the smaller wedding 
you know, who knows if the whole, everything goes back to normal in a few years, who knows when that's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the big wedding receptions will come back. I don't know. But um, for now, this it's is... It's working. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and I don't know. I mean, you're pretty busy, John, but I think you I should know, be just, doing weddings. <laughs> I just got to the point, I was, I did it for a very long time, and then I just got to the point where I wasn't, I wasn't enjoying myself every time. I was getting to the point where the Saturday was coming up and I was like, oh, I got to do a wedding tomorrow. Yeah. And it was just that attitude. And it's like, that's not even fair to the bride and groom. If you're not going to give it 100%, then don't be there. And yeah. I wasn't at the point where I felt I was given my 100% the last couple ones. And then the weather, I find, has changed these days in the summers. And there's a lot of rainy ones. And then you get um, this area is uh, economically, they don't want to pay what yeah. should be paid for a wedding they want those hundred bucks or thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars all day they want you there 12 hours and they want you to give them all the files and yeah they just want to pay a thousand fifteen hundred bucks and to me it wasn't getting worth it anymore so well pop-up weddings addresses all those concerns yeah. what is if you don't mind asking when you're doing say one of those pop-ups what do you charge the bride and groom just for the photography part without the officiant well you have fishing in there i guess but yeah how much of that is photography well, if anybody's interested, go to pinkdoorweddings.com. Uh, for this pop-up wedding event, uh, this was the Sunday wedding right here. Yeah. It was raining that day. For this, for a pop-up, I think it's twenty-two ninety-seven per That's person, everything. and that includes a wedding officiant. They get legally married. They have the the chapel, the photography. I shoot the photography. We give them the high-res digital files. We have a price list with reprints, albums, canvas prints, and uh, okay. matted prints if they want to buy extras. Mm -hmm. uh, I do a slideshow in Pro Show Producer. So when they come to pick them up, I show them a slideshow. They get that. Mm -hmm. That's included. So if we do five in a weekend, that's 2,300 times five. What is that? Two, 11, 11 almost a little over $11,000. But if you say say your wife never did go and get her efficient and you had to hire an efficient to do it, yeah. how much of that twenty two hundred goes to you? Um, if we were having to pay an efficient, yes, an efficient charges roughly three hundred dollars per wedding. Yeah, so you'd probably still make a good eighteen nineteen hundred yourself per per wedding. Per yeah, wedding. yeah. So you do. Yeah, it's still a good chunk. Like say, oh yeah, even number of two grand times five weddings. There's tw ten grand right there. It's a high so profit it can be margin. Very, yeah, very much so. Uh, I think we're still undercharging because mm -hmm. we're but, new. Yeah, we're still new at it. We're if trying you do to do every weekend for a month. You just made yourself forty grand right there. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, that would be and, nice. I don't know that that's possible. No, but I'm just saying if you did, they were doing five for one whole month. In the in in the right market, it might be possible if there was enough people that wanted to get have pop up. I don't know. We're still exploring, you know. No, exactly. No, We're you're good because you. I find you seem to be on the cusp a lot of times on different because. Um, Thanks, John. When you came up with your um, fairy portraits, nobody else was doing those. And yeah. You come up with the pop up weddings. Nobody else is doing these right now the way you're doing them. So you seem to come. Yeah. You're like Canon in the camera industry back in the 90s. They were always the innovators and everybody else was following them and copying them. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> I feel in the love and appreciation and recognition. So, no, it's uh, you always got to find, in my attitude is how can I improve, innovate, stand out? What am I, what am I willing to do that my competition is not willing to exactly. do? Exactly, and that's the same with me because there's so much here doing the same old, same old kind of shooting for family portraits and that, and people are going to mm -hmm. them, and it's great. And some of them are awesome at it, but it's not my style. I like the big, bright, bold colors. I'm not that faded, yeah. orangey, warm tone, dark edges yeah. like some of them are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to explain it, but a lot of people tell me they really, they can, they really like the way I work the crowd, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'm sure you have that too, because you seem like a very happy, outgoing, confident kind of guy who likes to positively take charge and give people a flow, a direction. But with the Hurley thing, the headshot crew, uh, which I joined up, and I've been the watching the videos, <laughs> so I want to take that, which I've already got yep. as a baseline. Yep. And I want to take it, I want to make it even better. Well, even he says, like, what he's showing you is just tried and true what works for him. 
Yeah. And then it's up to you to do it your way to make it yeah. yours. He's not yeah. asking you to copy everything he does. No. He wants you to learn it to get that base because, like he said, he started with just a big bay window behind him and this big flat light hitting the people. And that's what he did until he learned yeah. his lighting. So, and uh, he, he means that same point you just said when it comes to lighting, when it comes to your shtick. He calls it your shtick. Yeah. I watched that video a few days ago. So... Well, I'm always day. telling my wife I got to come up with a saying because he always does the shebang when he gets yeah. like something that he likes. I can't copy him. <laughs> Boom shakalaka. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it's true, okay. and uh, I'm really enjoying the uh, Hurley videos. Yeah. Uh, because it's going to directly affect the way I'm shooting and the uh, rapport that I have with my clients. Yeah. I agree. So. <laughs> Yeah, me too. I've been watching them and I've been doing them, but the, it wasn't until we interviewed them a couple of weeks ago that I, I was doing that seven day trial, and then I went and I, um, I actually signed up for, the headshot crew. So I'm learning a lot of that stuff because I'm, haven't had a chance in the last couple of days to a week to watch his, a lot of his stuff, but I was watching mm -hmm. all before then. But it's slowing down as this week goes on. I'll be, get some time to do it. Well, I, I sort of put myself in a regimen. I'm like, okay, every day I'm going to watch one video. Mm -hmm. So after a week, you got seven videos. Exactly. And um, you got to sort of be disciplined about it and put yourself on a strict regimen. And then I think that that's really, really important. So yeah. that's what I'm doing, anyways. And I find it interesting. I even uh, went on last week to one of his Tuesday podcasting. He wasn't on it that one. He actually came on for a second because he was doing a shoot at a studio himself and he came on in between takes. But right. he has a couple of people that run it for him. It was the uh, Tough Love Tuesday or whatever they call it. <laughs> and, I went on and they actually have the headshot of the week and they go through a bunch of people and they look at their shots and it's like a zoom call it's a big zoom call basically so i will be submitting images i am too i'm going to do maybe this i might do a, a headshot of the month this week yeah so I, john john and i can challenge each other yeah i could actually enter the headshot of the week if i want now because uh i shot one tonight today and i'm going to be shooting another one tonight mm -hmm. so and headshot of the, the week you have to shoot it that week Whereas headshot a month could be shot, it could have been shot two years ago for all you care. You just uh, apply it. And... So he has an area though, I haven't really figured this one out yet, where you can just go post and throw images in there. Yeah, it's on your own um, biography type thing there on your page. Yeah, can you not go account? into like a place and say, hey guys, uh, here's uh, a picture I just shot. Any? Yep, uh, I've done it. You know, that kind of thing. Kind of yep. like the No BS forum and... Uh, I wanted to do that with the headshots that I just yep. showed you because I was really kind of bummed out at first because I thought I, I blew it with that lady. Yep. And I thought, oh, I got okay, I got to be willing and I got to be open to learning. <laughs> and, uh, you know, not not be affected by CBS. You know what CBS is? Uh, you did tell me, uh, crap, no, uh, CBS, you did tell me. Calcified brain. Okay, Shit. Well. <laughs> I was going to say shit, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> Calcified brain shit is like when we're stuck in our ways and yeah. uh, don't want to be affected by that. And so I want to be able to learn Definitely. and modify. Well, right after this, I'll go in. I'll, go, I'll give you a quick uh, overview. I'll show you my screen how you do that. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Do you want to do it now or before we? Or uh, we're almost done. So yeah. there was an image you wanted to show. Well, I can we... show you what we were doing today if you want. Yeah, that was uh, what you were doing. Because there was a show. group shot. Uh, is it that, And then we can wind her down. Yeah. So. Uh, one thing, I'm going to go screen share, and uh, I'm going to go to Google here, one second here, Google. Um, that's not what I wanted. Um, team. And I'll kind of give you an idea of how we uh, went about this um, for the shoot. So. Um, is it screen sharing it? No, you're not sharing. Uh, Chrome tab. So what we did was, can you see that all those images there? Yep. So we were going, when we were going to do this realtor, realtor they had a team of four. Uh, there was going to be a shot of three of them and then uh, a shot of just the two of them. So we were going through and I was showing them different images. And uh, I don't know if it's going to show up here because I'm not seeing it right now. But we, this is what I do before, like you were, we yeah. and I were talking earlier. I go through stuff like this just to get some ideas in my head. Not that I want to copy them exactly, but just to get some ideas. Mm -hmm. And we ended up, actually, it's funny because we ended up doing something similar to this here. 
um, but not exactly. Um, we are also looking at some other, I've done one actually like this before. Um, but I do this, I go through them and I just kind of find what we're going to do. Some cool and, poses uh, there. Very cool poses. So then, um, I'm probably gonna have to stop this share quickly. Uh, remove that. So I'm done. gonna open up. Um, it's my wife. I think if I go and open up my Lightroom, I should be able to show you my Lightroom. Um, oh, you know what? Um, actually, I can now. Almost wasn't gonna be able to show it to you. It'll be all, two seconds here because my microphone is not plugged in now, so I can actually put the hard drive I actually shot them on. That's why it's not opening to the last gallery I had. Because um, what I do, I like to do it in a way that, um, if I can, I shoot to my hard drive, my portable hard drive. That way when the shoot's over, instead of using your memory card and your camera and taking it out, I actually will just go and uh, just take the hard drive. So. Cool. There, so now I should be able to share my screen, so. I'm going to go share screen. These, these you just shot. Just shot just before we came on. That's why we were late today. No, no. Um, you were late. <laughs> there, can you see my Lightroom? I was here on time. Yeah. Who's that guy? I didn't know you were a real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the shoot, I told my friend, the one behind me there, the, the female behind me. Yeah. I've done her headshots in that. And she's in my B&I group. We're really good friends. And uh, I've done a bunch of headshots for her. And so it's her team, basically. Nice. And so there's her. The guy there is just getting his license. So he's almost fully licensed. He's actually an OPP officer mm -hmm. getting his license. The girl in the far right already has her licenses with her. And the one in the middle is her designer or something like that. Some sort of a designer where I guess, I don't know if she meant stager type designer or what. But I think you're, that is. You're, there's a black stripe on the top. I don't know. if Can you get rid of that? Uh, let me just go into see what you're talking about here can you see it maybe you can't see it at your end oh okay yeah that's kind of weird how it's doing that uh one second i don't know why it's doing that let me see what if we yeah that's weird how it's doing that because it's not showing up on the light room like that click another image still doing yeah, it doing it again yeah that's okay we get the idea we could see the small thumbnail in the top left yeah, that's kind of weird though why it's doing that because um, I don't know where that black line is coming from. My cursor yeah. must be over the black line right now. Somebody's cutting stuff outside my door here. I was going to say. And so, um, what if I go full screen? Does that help? It, for a second, but now it's gone. That's fine. Okay. So, so yeah, that was just a group shot we did at the end. I always try and I told Ann, when it's done, can we do a group shot to show the whole team that was in the shoot? She said, yeah. yeah. But what we did was, um, I'm going to go right to the beginning here. And so I always do like a gray car but and just to get my balance and the stuff. And I don't know if it's going through people right now, the gentleman there. Yeah. So that's kind of my Peter Hurley setup. You can see the triangle. I tried to go a little smaller with my triangle this time so that yeah. the triangle shows up in their black pupils and not in the color so I could see the color of their eyes. Just a personal uh -huh. thing. And I just wanted to try it. I like it myself, but some people might not like it. Um, whereas I know yours was a little bit more separated. We were well, I'm still learning. I'm still we learning. Getting them used to it. This guy was big too. He's like six foot four or something like that. Big boy. Um, and then sometimes when we're going through them after, they'll say ones they like. Like, there, I don't know if you see the little white flag down here. Yeah. So I'll flag the ones that they kind of like. We like that one. It looks very approachable, very. Um, uh -huh. And I told them, you don't want to look like me. You want somebody that's going to call, say, I want them to sell my house. Because they're using these for their signs. You see his chin went up a little too high. Mm -hmm. Double chins, as you can see. And then it was funny. I said, do you want the gray background? And they're like, I don't know. So, Because this was the last shot, which we all really like. That's one of our favorite. And I said, well, all I got to do is turn that backlight off. Because he's standing probably 12 feet from the background. Because if you remember my white floor, mm -hmm. right where the white floor ends and the regular floor starts, that's where they're standing. Yeah. So when I turn my away. one backlight off, I, it goes gray. And then I got was able to get that shot, which we thought we loved. We thought, hey, we got it right on the first shot. We didn't even shoot anymore. And nice. it just gives a different look. Just He's in the same spot. We just turned the backlight off. Nice. It goes nice and gray. And then we got the young lady in there, and we were doing a bunch of shots. And I think this was the one that we all liked. And these are straight out of the camera. There's nothing done to them yet. It's cool. 
and then we started doing this girl here and we found that the toothy smile was better for her because it kind of kind of looks kind of snotty when she didn't smile not that she was snotty she had boogers but then boom when you open that her big toothy smile it was gorgeous nice to do it more often we like this one um we've got a bunch of them that are actually flagged here cool and so that's what we did. But then we got to the group shop, like I was telling you. So we were piecing them together. Uh -huh. And we were coming up with this. Yeah. So these are just all. And this is uh, off to the side here. I've got an Einstein with a 32, I think, or a 36-inch octobox. Far in front, just feathering in, uh, across them. And then you mm -hmm. can see the one soft box here. And there's another one over here shining on the background just to, to give it to that the pure white. Um, so we were going through a whole bunch of those and then we added the gentleman in. We did this first and he was in shadow. So I moved my lights around and got it perfect. And then, but I didn't like his pose. I felt his back to her didn't, wasn't working. So we turned him in Yeah. and that's what we liked. A little more approachable. And, then, and also right here, I found there was not enough white on this side compared to here. So we were moving her around and we were finally getting into where we liked everything. And I think with some of these last ones, like but like there, I think that was one that we all liked, kind of. This is good. Going. Thanks so, for sharing that. Yeah, just a whole bunch of them. And then, of course, uh, I think it was near the end of those shots, somewhere around here. These are the ones that we think are the keepers. Right. So that's the realty team right there. So, it's awesome, John. I love and it. And then, of course, they wanted to do something a little different. So I swear you almost know what you're doing. Almost. Okay, I got to so, run. It's almost 2.30. Sounds like a plan. And then, of I'm course, we'll that. So you'll be seeing that posted later today. Yeah. I can't even get okay. back to our screen here. There we go. Now I'm so back. next week, we have Nathan Grant on uh, on the books. Very cool. I'll yeah, have to learn or, up a bit more about him. Or next week, you're... No, no, oh, yeah. Nathan is in two weeks. Next week's yeah, Louie from Florida. Next week, okay. we have to go Tuesday, I think you said. Uh, yeah, well, either Tuesday or Thursday. It just turned out that I actually have um, we'll let everybody shoot know. all day. I'm trying yeah. to remember what that shoot is, but it's something all day. Um, oh, it's a Realty Golf Tournament that I shoot yes. every year, and I donate my time to go and shoot that. So I just set it at a hole, and they come in the team, and I shoot a, the team of four, and then they tee off, and then the next team comes when they get there, and we do it till we get every team done. And I donate nice. that as a, a charity thing for them, so I don't charge them for it. Sure. So, so it just turned out to be a Wednesday. So I apologize. So if we could do another day, that'd be perfect. Yeah. yeah I'll let you know, guys. Sounds good. We will talk soon. Thanks a lot, John. I got to run. Thank you. You got to run. We got to yep. go and uh, appreciate uh, doing the live stream again. Guys, I hope Thank you guys you. Uh, enjoyed it. If you're watching the replay, put your yeah. comments down below. Yeah. Just do hashtag yeah. replay so we know you put them in there. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So we'll, we'll see talk. everybody next week. Ciao.